Good morning and welcome to our weekend wellness hour. Today we have a friend of mine, Dr. Scott Gam, who I met about a year and a half ago through a mutual friend. And Scott, when I met him, was actually in Sedona where I'm at now, had a practice, and he decided to move to Iowa where he now has his own chiropractic practice there. And Scott is very, very well skilled in the industry with over 20 years of experience in various places throughout the US. And has built up chiropractic practices and has really done a lot of studies in well in wellness and health and he has gone above and beyond just chiropractic studies and so I wanted to bring him on today conversations with him are always fascinating and we always dive in deep so please join us today thank you so much for coming on today Dr. Gam really enjoying having you here thanks for having me I'm excited yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about your background, kind of what led into chiropractic and this further dive into wellness and what it means? Yeah, you know, I, um, you know, I think I, I think people who would get into the healing arts are sometimes led there through their own personal need, you know, and that was really the case with me is that, you know, from the time I was a really young kid, I had uh, essentially a mineral deficiency. And so, but I always have been very, very connected, as we all are, truthfully, uh, into that inner wisdom. And so my solution for mineral deficiency was to go eat dirt and dip every single thing in dirt. So Iowa black dirt was on the menu every single night with me. And I would eat sand if I was the Mississippi River on the sandbar, that toxic sludge of the 1970s. So yeah, I'm either going to live a really long time or things might go wrong. I'm not sure. But uh, you know, that was my how I grew up. And, and then that I have a lot of energy. And so if I was in a bigger city, I would have probably been labeled with ADHD. In fact, I grew up right next to my later to be high school guidance counselor who called me the white tornado. So I had all of this energy and a lot, a lot of focus other than what I wanted to do. Well, as that kind of continued on, I went through a lot of stress throughout school. And then uh, I was really fast. I was a really good athlete when I was about 12, 14 years old. And then something happened. I couldn't figure it out. And that was, I ran faster times as an eighth grader than I did as a senior. And for most people, if they're going through an evolutionary phase in their body and a growth phase, you do get stronger and faster. Yeah. Well, I grew, I gained a lot of muscle. I'd even joined the military uh, between my junior and senior year of high school. So I was fit, I was training, and I kept getting slower. And I kept yeah. hurting my body. And I couldn't figure out why. Well, years later, I came to find out it was because my pelvis, which was supposed to be sitting like this, was twisted about as much as I've ever seen a pelvis be twisted on an x-ray. Oh, and wow. my head was cockeyed completely and totally off to the right side. Mm -hmm. And take that for a day, no big deal. Go for a little run, not a big deal. If you're an yeah. ultra marathoner like you and you take a head that's this far out of alignment and you just pound and pound and pound, you're going to wear things out. And that's yeah. what I was doing. And so I was going to a, a physical therapist all the time. I was just in there like we on some I was always broke. They were great. I love going to physical therapy. They were nice. They helped. They were, you know, they're very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really thought I wanted to be a physical therapist. And, and then one day I uh, called up, I had a, a, through family members, I had a, a chiropractor in, in the family and I was interested in chiropractic, but I do nothing about it. I'd never been adjusted. And I called him up and I said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm interested in physical therapy. I'm interested in chiropractic, but I really don't even know the difference between the two. He goes, okay. He goes, well, theoretically, as a chiropractor, you can do most of the things a physical therapist can do. He goes, but you can also adjust. And when you adjust, you can see miracles. And I had this voice come over my shoulder that said, I want to see miracles. And I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and I just started the pursuit of of wanting to help people. And I always had that in my heart was first to how to figure out how to get my body healthy and then how to help others who'd been challenged along the way too. And I lost a lot of hope. You know, when you've been, your health has been seriously challenged for long periods of time. It's, you don't, it's hard to explain that to people. You know, it's yeah. hard to explain when you've gone through, you know, a decade of health problems, not necessarily the same thing all the time, but your body always trying to communicate to you, fix this thing. And I just didn't know how. And that's so true. Yeah. yeah. And that put me in my pursuit of trying to figure it out. And that's, you know, what led me to just continually just keep learning. 
it was my own personal pursuit of not having to fix just one thing. I didn't just have a headache or I didn't have migraines or I didn't have depression. I had a plethora of misalignments with anxiety and digestion problems and sleeping disorders and all sorts of other stuff. And the only way, you know, out of it was through it. And yeah. that's really what I've taken on is just what can a person do in the simplest, fastest, safest way to get results. And that's what's been driving me for the past 20 years. Yeah. And you say something extremely important is our body talks to us. It communicates to us. And many times if we're busy, we ignore it. We push it down. We shove it away and say, you know what? I can just deal with it. My body's going to get better on its own and I'll deal with it next week if it's still there. Right. Or we may listen to it like you did, but then it's like, okay, what do I do now? Who do I turn to? Right. If it's five or 10 different symptoms, you don't even know who to go to first. And that's scary as well. So it's good though, that you mentioned that. And when you heard this gentleman say, you know, try chiropractic, did you jump in then right away to chiropractic school or did you yeah. experience the treatment both, with him both, or what'd you do? Speed, but I'd never had been adjusted. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. I was, I was actually, oh, wow. I just, innately understood I wanted to help people. And that seemed like a cool modality. Mm -hmm. That was it. I didn't okay. know what it was. I didn't understand the philosophy. I didn't uh, know a single bit about it. I'd never been adjusted. And it wasn't until I was in my, my first um, year, my first trimester at uh, Palmer College of Chiropractic that, you know, I went in with a friend and she got adjusted. And the guy looked at me and goes, you want to get adjusted? And I was like, why? I really didn't even know. I still had this correlation <laughs> mm -hmm. that chiropractic was for an immediate pain or something. I didn't realize what it even was. And, and, you know, I laid down on the table and he felt my spine and no one ever felt my spine. You know, all of these years and all these different therapies I'd been to and no one ever actually felt down into the, the orchestrating nervous system to see whether my body was in alignment. They kept working on all the bits and the pieces that weren't working right, but no one said, let's yeah. look at you and see what this fuse box of the brain talking to the body was trying to tell and communicate. And this guy gave me an adjustment and I just remember it was really loud and very dramatic. <laughs> and beyond that, I remember right afterwards, I walked in, in, in Davenport, Iowa, there's this very steep hill that goes up to the college. Mm -hmm. It's called Brady Street Hill. And I remember walking down the hill in my pelvis, I swear, moved from there to there. My head went from here to here. And I remember walking and my body just having this mojo. Like this. Yeah. I mean, I felt good. Not a little good. I felt as good as I had ever felt. And I remember the thing, thinking, there's something really to this chiropractic thing. This thing is amazing. I, I mean, good job, good choice, but I had no idea. And yeah. And, you know, I think I, I love, you know, begin with the end in mind, but I didn't have the end in mind. So I really struggled through school. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And if your core value is I want to help people, but you're not figuring out how everything you're learning is correlating back into that, it can be a struggle. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So then you finished school. Now, did you get specialized training? Because you do straight upper cervical chiropractic, which is different from general chiropractic, correct? Yeah, it's it's a very much an emphasis on the base of the brainstem and how your okay. head sits on the first movable bone in the spine and mm -hmm. every other bone below C1, which is called your atlas is movable. It has some play in, in the joints, but, but they're locked. Atlas is the only freely movable bone and it can move about 10,000 different variations. Mm -hmm. And and so when I first got out my first seven years of chiropractic college, I tried a lot of different things. You know, I tried okay. to, I did a lot of traction, which worked on a lot of people. I did a lot mm -hmm. of uh, different therapies, worked on a lot of people. I did a lot of nutritional concept, worked on a lot of people, but I never was able to bring everything together. And at the time I was in a four wheeler accident when I was in my early twenties and I lost feeling slowly into my feeling in my left hand. And I started losing the strength in my left hand. And I developed chronic sacroiliac pain. And the chiropractic care that I was under would adjust me. I'd always feel better. I always enjoyed my adjustment, but it wouldn't mm -hmm. stay. It wouldn't last. And I didn't have like these long-term benefits that a lot of the people I was giving care to were, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Because I couldn't find my type of care for someone to do it to me. And yep. then I did. 
And I went to this guy named Dr. Dr. Ray Marshall, and he's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he'd take a look at me, and he, my head was tilted off to the side, and he goes, we can fix that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, prove it. And he did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, I'm always yeah. a prove it. I'm, an, I'm like what I call an optimistic skeptic. I'm willing yeah. to listen. If it makes sense through my kind of vetting process, I'm willing to jump in. But if it really doesn't get results, I'm also willing to call the ball and say, okay, that was a good experience. You know, because yeah. I've worked on lots of people that I wasn't the right answer for. So I don't want to right. say you can be all things to all people, right? But what I have found is there is a very much a formula that if most people apply it, they can get fabulous results. And that's what yeah. we began to develop over the next year. So. I switched over to doing straight upper cervical chiropractic and a technique called NUCA. And for the next seven years, in, when I was in Colorado Springs, no one really felt me touch them. It's a very yeah. bizarre technique. It's this very complicated x-ray analysis and this patient set up and the doctor set up and, and I would be doing and flexing and it looks really weird if you ever see it online. And yeah. people were like, that's it? And then they feel their whole body shift and they felt great. And I built a really large practice doing it. And when I, when I chose to leave Colorado and eventually come back to Iowa, where I'm from, Northeast Iowa, I really wanted to put my 20 years of experience together because I had found massive value in doing traction. I found massive value in doing brain exercise. I found value in upper cervical chiropractic. I found value in nutrition and detoxification. And I'd never put it totally together in a package, if you will. Mm-hmm. And that's what we started focusing on was how do we bring the whole thing together? Right. And so that's what you developed into Vitalism Code, right? Yeah. So we have a a program called Vitalism Code. And the concept of vitalism isn't new. It's not new age. It's just the concept Mm -hmm. that's about listening within and knowing that we are one with nature. And the more we treat ourselves with reverence, our bodies with uh, a lot of self-love and self-care and do things that are in their most natural and pure form while honoring the earth within the same breath, you can see some really cool changes. And that's really not what's taught within mechanism, which is largely what the modern pharmaceutical and, and medical industry is based on. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I am very drawn to healthcare professionals or healers who really want to tap into the body and teach people how to use their own body to heal themselves or to feel better or to gain something that they had lost. And that's one of the things that I'm glad that we're talking today because as much as there are certain cases that need medications, there are many cases where people are taking medications and don't need them because they just haven't figured out how to optimize their body or change their habits that leads to freedom in their body. And so it's a very powerful discussion because you can really change someone's life. So you can transform them. You get rid of medications and you get rid of side effects. You can change how they move, how they feel, their their mental and emotional states. All of those come into play. So can you talk to us about your four pillars of wellness that need to be all addressed at the same time so that people can start to feel better? Certainly. You know, I'm going to start with one concept and then we'll Mm -hmm. kind of build off of there. And this is what I do. And I think everyone out there has been under a tremendous amount of anxiety and stress. You know, I think that's the first thing that really we need to address. And one of the things that we've had all of our clients do for the past couple of years is that I have them hold up their thumb and, Mm -hmm. and I say, are you your thumb? And the most common answer is yes. And then they go, no. And then they go, yes, no. And they're like, this is a terrible question. I have no idea. And, and our our belief system is, of course, you're not your thumb. Yeah. Right. Okay. How do you know that? How do you know you're not your thumb? Because you can tell your thumb what to do. Yeah. You can use your mental energy, send a signal from your brain through your brainstem down your arm. You can tell your thumb what to do. Mm -hmm. And because we believe that we aren't just our mind, we aren't just our body, but we are a a spiritual being having a very physical experience. And so Mm -hmm. I, as a spiritual being, I'm telling my thumb what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, can your thumb tell you what to do? Not really. If I held a a lighter up to it, what does it do? It's going to give you information. It's going to tell you to move away, but it's a matter of the interaction. (laughs) It's it's going to move. In fact, that's the subconscious mind. Yes. Right. So mm-hmm. over 96% of 
90% of our day is spent with our thumb telling us what to do. Mm -hmm. I have a craving, I have sugar. I have emotions build up, I either push them down or I take them out on someone else. I have a a tightness in my body and I either honor it and stretch it and work on it, or I just say, whatever, it'll hopefully get better on its own and I move on. You know, Mm -hmm. our body is communicating to us all the time. And learning to understand that one, you are not your body and your body is just an informational tool helping guide you to make better, healthier decisions. And when you do that, it creates what we call the gap. And that gap is a little bit of a space. And, it's a, and when we start thinking about like emotions and mm-hmm. say something like stress or anxiety comes up, it percolates up and we, we feel this tension and we want out of it. Everyone does. No one likes to say, oh, this feels great. I love to feel tense and anxious and my blood pressure is sweating. No one likes that. So what we do is we've been trained to either take a, you know, a pharmaceutical, some people like you have talked about breath work, which is brilliant and exactly what we teach too. In fact, we've used a lot of your work since uh, in the last six months. And, but the deeper reality is they have to create a gap. They have to create this space. And within that space, they can make a better decision. So what we say is that is the anxiety. Mm -hmm. That is the stress. That is the craving that is the hip pain that is the headache because when it's your headache and your stress and your pain and your anxiety you own it and like lord of the rings the metaphor is my precious you want to hold on to it and so many people do they hold on to their pain and ownership because they get a lot of attention you know pain is a beautiful thing if you want attention how you feeling today how's that going how's that and, and we, we're here to help. We're a communal being, a communal species. And we want to give ourselves. We want to help others. But, we, but it doesn't necessarily teach us how to help ourselves. Yeah. 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 And learning to listen we, within is helping yourself. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. We, when, as soon as something happens, we look for an outside source. Mm-hmm. Who do we go to to get help to put the Band-Aid on it to stop it as quickly as possible? Instead of sitting in it and saying, okay, Mm-hmm. What is the issue? How do we, you know, like you said, you have that, you separate the issue from you and mm-hmm. say, okay, how do we really address it? And there are sometimes critical situations where you can't do that, you know, Absolutely. some major critical situations. Even having, that, even having that ability to do that, though, now that you know when it's a critical situation. Exactly. Right? Totally. Because right now, everything feels like a freaking critical situation. You know, there's so much political going on. It's like you're just in this chronic fear state without that breath. It's like, okay, that's just how I'm feeling right now. That's just this moment. That's the moment. Yeah. Right. And it creates a beautiful gap. Within that gap, you can make better choices. And it takes some time to figure out how to create that. It does. And and I actually do talk to people about when you're changing your habits, so like when I'm teaching people how to change their breathing and their body position to maximize Mm -hmm. um, a calm, I say practice when you are not in your heightened state. (laughs) You need to gain some skills on how to do this. And then you gradually, you add it into something when you're really stressful. So that way you can implement it into something that's even more stressful. So it's, it's a change in habits so that you can change your brain neurochemistry to be able to handle these situations and respond differently. And it is about responding differently. And I think that we do have to train our thumb, you know, because we've been so trained, like you just said, if you want to look pretty, well, here's a makeup or here's a, here's an outfit or here's an exercise program, all of these outside in modalities versus sitting and really feeling what your body needs. We've just been really marketed to. And it works. I mean, I bought a ton of stuff that all of a sudden I was like, what in the world was I thinking? That is not a good purchase, you know? (laughs) And and, and that's because we do get caught up in that outside in modality of of, of what we want to find happiness. But everyone knows the truest, happiest moments have rarely been because they got a gift. Right. It's typically if they've given a gift or they're out in nature or they're they're with a friend and they're laughing. Well, that's can be done over a back box of macaroni and cheese as as easy as it can anything else. You know, so it, yeah. it's not necessarily about um, fixing it from the outside in. It's how do you find that resonant happiness? How do you find that ability to cultivate? And we find that if you can create that gap, it really does work. Yeah, that's amazing. So once people start to learn how to have this gap, what's kind of the next step? 
You know, the, I think the fastest way to develop it is a hot and cold shower. Yeah, I don't know. Have, have, has had anyone talk about doing the hot and cold shower before? I'm very, I'm very familiar with the cold, <clears throat> the cold shower, and um, yeah, very familiar with that. I, <laughs> I do not do the cold shower. Okay, one, it is, it's too tough. You know, and I know Wim Hof talks a lot about that. And, and you do the do the, the cold shower. I mean, nobody wants to walk into a freaking cold shower. You know, <laughs> it's just like nope. it doesn't happen. So what we've done is we created something I believe is way more useful. And it's a mm -hmm. hot and cold shower. So what I recommend is just shower like normal. Right? Mm -hmm. It feels good. We need good feelings in our day, even though yes. that is kind of an outside in modality. But then once you get all done showering, what you do is you turn it down to cold. Mm -hmm. And the reason you do that is because when you're all warm, that's warm and fuzzy. Earth, life, gravity, partnerships, nothing that you're going to deal with the rest of the day is going to feel really as good as that shower <laughs> in a lot of ways. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, maybe there's something else good. But that warm yeah. shower feels so good, right? Mm -hmm. Turn it down to cold. And the reason you turn it down to cold is because Earth is going to show up. Gravity is going to show up. Life is going to give you resistance so you can grow and learn. But this creates adaptability. So what I like to do is I do a thing called super brain yoga in while I'm actually in the cold shower. What that okay. does is the best brain reset exercise. They, people can go to vitalismco.com and check out how to do it. There's a, videos on it. It's really well done. But essentially, it's an old brain gym exercise where you go like this, and it uses a breathing technique that you recommend. Okay. One goes on the roof of the mouth. You breathe hard into the brain stem, and you squat down. And then you okay. come back up. So in I the do shower. That while it's cold. Okay. Okay, so I'm okay. activating my brain to, to handle the stress of the moment. And then I turn it back to warm. And I get all okay. the cold off. And when I turn it back to warm, I breathe in the best part of my day. When you go from cold to that warm, it feels so freaking good. And you just like, yeah. just like feel like God's love on you. And that's literally what I try to do. I just totally just, and then right when I get to the point that feels so good, I turn it back to cold. Okay. Then once again, life is going to show up. So then I do super brain and yoga again. Okay. okay. I come back up. I turn it back to hot. One more time. I totally okay. breathe in. And what I'm doing is I'm challenging my brain stem, which is my primitive center, which is what we call, like you mentioned, the fight, flight, or freeze component of our nervous system mm -hmm. called the sympathetic nervous system. And what I'm doing is I'm challenging that and I'm creating yeah. an adaptability. Because it's the same thing if you're just sitting there in a, in a room and then somebody comes in and yells at you, you have to be able to be a breath away from being calm, collective, or you're going to escalate the situation. So yeah. then I always end on cold. And I do the last okay. super brain yoga. So I do super brain yoga three times. The last one is with my eyes closed. And I do them okay. always on my tiptoes. It okay. challenges your entire nervous system. I end on cold. I do about a one minute meditation where I just stand there and I, after it's cold, it's done and I just breathe in it. And by the time you get to the third cold, it's not cold at all. Okay. It's fascinating. And now and it, when you stand there and do your meditation, is it still with the cold water on or have you turned the water I, I off? I shut it off. It's cold. My body's still okay. cold and I just get totally present. I just get centered within a breath and then the rest of the day just happens. And I've, I've been really, I've probably missed very few days in the last year and a half doing this. And I've found that my ability to respond to whatever stress gets presented is, it's, I'm not, you know, once you say it, it's going to, something's going to happen. <laughs> so of course, like, it has to test you. <laughs> like Ron Murphy's law right now, you know, <laughs> and, and the truth is that I don't, I, not many things have worked me up. And if they do, I can yeah. let them out real quick, reel myself back in, actually, work through it the way it's supposed to be, not suppress it, not go through passive aggressive with it, acknowledge it, move into it, deal with it, and I'm done. And it's helped me beyond words on how I've been able to really transform myself into, and that's one of the key things that I've been doing. That's amazing. And so this helps you kind of start getting, becoming more aware of that gap because you're, you're feeling your body yep. and you're feeling it in the warm state, you're, you're being aware. Yes. how good that feels then you become aware of the cold and you survive it so yeah. you know you're not going to die in the cold shower exactly. and you can go back and forth 100 percent. you know and there's one yeah. other thing Amy, that i that i love is that mm -hmm. theoretically no one is going to be meaner to me than i just was to myself yeah yeah most people are really mean to themselves in the wrong way 
they look at themselves in the mirror and they don't have self-love. They look at themselves and they're super critical of their body or their self-image or their intelligence level or their financial level, whatever that happens to be, okay? Yeah. And by really doing the hot and the cold shower, realize that no one's gonna more than likely throw ice cold water on your head during the day, and which would suck, right? If somebody just punches like the football players at the end of the game, if somebody did that to you every day, you'd be like, that's terrible, right? And no one's gonna do that. That's but true. if I do if I do it to myself, it's like tell my thumb left, right, up, mm -hmm. down. You're going to do what I want to. I'm willing to listen to you. If you do get in the fire, you do get in the cold, I'm going to listen to you. But I'm in control of this day. It doesn't let the outside world do anything to you because it's not going to be meaner to you than you already were. We don't live in a modern day of, of physical confrontation. We deal with mm -hmm. emotional confrontation all day long. And you have to yeah. train for it. I mean, martial arts is important, defending yourself physically, but how many actual Kung Fu fights have you seen in your life? I know, exactly. One. <laughs> One, right? It didn't go well, right? And, no, but, and luckily I wasn't involved. Yeah, but emotionally we are all in a battle yeah. most of our day. That's just the way society yeah. works. So you have to train at a new level of understanding your neuroemotional ability to adapt. In Han yeah. Phone Showers, amongst everything else we do, is always about learning to adapt with our body within the environment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see how that can prepare you. And it sets you up for then being able to handle dif other difficulties going on. Absolutely. So you're not so reactive, which right, then right, kicks yes. in that in the fight or flight system as well. The same type of reaction is driving by Kri Krispy Kremes. True. It's the same reaction. You know, it's, it's your, your, your gut has a bunch of, you know, uh, candida yeast in it that is craving sugar and flour and in an inflammatory state because in the moment it feels good and gives you an actual serotonin release because the sugar hits your gut and you get this momentary hit of, yay, life is happy yeah. until all the other chemical components come into play. But it's that ability to say, no, we're going to keep driving. <laughs> you know? I'm never going to look at my thumb the same again. <laughs> or like... Right. Got no. It. Yes. We're, we're going to go to Whole Foods instead, or we're going to wait, or we're going to practice in a minute of fasting, or whatever that looks like for yeah. the moment. But that ability to recognize that you are not your body. Yeah. Right? Your body is a part of you, but you are not your body. And that can just transcend so many people. And we've had people just by applying that, uh, along with our type of care and, and doing the other components we'll talk about in a few minutes here. They've been able to overcome years of anxiety, literally a lifetime of anxiety and stress and fear and pain and even bad relationships and not living into their soul's purpose because they just didn't recognize that they were not their body. They always yeah. thought that they were the responsive component. Mm -hmm. Very valuable. It's a shift. It's a, mind sh it's a mindset mm -hmm. shift to train people. And I imagine that when you're doing this, you said that this is just one component. So I imagine there has to be other components because we can easily fall off the wagon yeah. if we don't address all the other issues. Yeah, I think everything, and, and that becomes what we've uh, encountered with, uh, you know, well, everything. Everyone advertises the one thing, you know, you can do one thing and this is going to make you, you know, pretty or happy or, you know, healthy or fit and it's just do this one thing. And there's very little truth to that. I mean, health is yeah. a very complex uh, wheel with many, many spokes, right? We, mm -hmm. within what we call vitalism code, narrow it down to four what we call pillars. I mean, there's four things that if you really work on them simultaneously, you can move the dial. If you just work on your health and fitness, so many people do that. They'll, they'll exercise, they'll bike, they'll run, and, and that can help with their mindfulness. That can drive better uh, nutritional um, eating habits, but if they're not detoxing properly, you know what? They just build up an accumulation of, of stress and they get really, really sick. Yeah. You know, or if, you know, someone is, is traveling a lot and they're, you know, they, they get off their routine and they're, uh, so they don't eat right. They don't, they're not exercising as much. Their mind's super happy because they're traveling and life is good. And I don't have any of my other earthly, you know, stresses, but they're just building up toxins from eating at nasty restaurants. By the time they get back, they need a vacation from their vacation. Yeah. And it wasn't from the vacation, it was from the choices that they made. And so maintaining that balance within reason, you know, it's not like you're right. 
perfect all the time. You know, part of the right. fun is knowing that my thumb, sometimes I let my thumb run the show. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's okay. Yeah. And it also, it gives you a little test to see how well your body has really healed and okay, you let your thumb drive for this meal and yep. you have, have it and you can see, okay, what is my body's response? You'll know right away if your gut, you know, flora and fauna has changed enough. Yep. It's going to let you know very quickly that that shouldn't be on your uh, diet anymore. <laughs> you know, you, you, know? Have you learn, right? You do learn, but it's like white sugar, you know, which I used to yeah. live on. It was a massive amount of my caloric intake was white flour and white mm -hmm. sugar and dairy. And they were, like you said, my, my flora, my gut was terrible. You know, when I was 12 to 14 years old, I lived on taking Tums and I had a chronic burning pain right here between my shoulders. Oh, no. no one ever told me, oh, cause that's the nerves going into your stomach. Didn't catch yeah. that one, you know? And so I was just trying to change the chemistry without changing the chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's true. You know, Medical doctors didn't educate me on that and I didn't know that. And that's, I think the beautiful thing about what has happened with wellness is there is a lot of information out there and yet mm -hmm. it's very con confusing and everybody in a lot of ways is trying to sell something, right? Yep. So yep. many different things. It's just sell. And, and it gets tired. You know, we get tired as the consumer when we look in our, our cabinets and we have just every single nutritional component that there is a man's ever found, you know, in the Amazon jungles or the chemistry of the labs. And, and it's like, what do I take even now? And, yeah. you know, within vitalism, we just break it down to some simple, simple stuff. And is it the end all? No. You know, I think every single one of those pillars, you can keep getting better and better and better within. I know I'm always trying and I'm always failing mm -hmm. and I get back up and I try again. Yep. And, but it's having a concept, a foundation of a belief that you can then apply here or here or here or here. And what I've found is that most people truly do not have a total foundational understanding of what their health and wellness is. They'll, yeah. they'll have a component really dialed in. They'll have thought about this quite a bit, but so frequently like, oh, I just, I wouldn't even consider changing my diet. Or I wouldn't, I've never even considered even under thinking about a, a fast or a nutritional change mm -hmm. in my, and, and how I eat. Or if you say the word meditation and they, they think you, you're trying to get them into a cult or something. I mean, it's very unique when you start dealing with people who have had no training in this. And, and, I, and what we created was a, a program called Vitalism Code. And the concept okay. was, I did come from an Iowa farm boy. I'm around my family now. Most of them do not do most of the things that I do. Uh -huh. Okay. It's just, yep. the roof. so I had to meet people where they're at. Yeah. And I couldn't just come back from being away for 20 years and then say, this is exactly what you got to do and how you do it. And I tried that a little bit and we're just saying oh. it's pretty bad. And it was my dad who straightened me out. And at the time I was helping him go through uh, his cancer treatments. And mm -hmm. I, I'd come back here and I had this whole plethora of, you know, here's how to do vitamin C drips and glutathione and here's the juicing protocol I'm going to do with you. And he looks right at me dead in the eye and he says, Scott, he goes, I'm not going to do anything you tell me to do. I'm going to do every single thing the medical doctors tell me to do, but you can adjust yeah. me. And that's what you can do. And it was very humbling because I had all this extra knowledge and stuff of what I wanted to help him do to get through cancer. And I'd help some people come through stage four cancer with fabulous results using the, the types of protocols that I'd worked on. Yeah. And I just had to step back Damon, and go, okay, all right, how do I simplify this? And we did adjust him. I adjusted him almost every single day because he couldn't hold it because he was getting chemo and radiation and this type yeah. of cancer. But he went through the whole thing and his immune system didn't drop one point. And That's Mayo awesome. Clinic hadn't had anyone that they could find that they had had their immune system didn't change one single bit because we kept his nervous system going. And that's important. So keeping your spine and your nervous system and with upper cervical chiropractic, it is a very unique form of chiropractic. If people have tried chiropractic and never either seen results or felt stable or felt that they were really gaining on it over time, it's, it's another option for people who think they've tried everything to try because you haven't tried this. Until you get a specific adjustment very frequently in the right direction that retrains your, your spine straight up and down this way, it opens up the entire pathway and people get better from all sorts of crazy stuff. And people can go to our natural spine. It's called thenaturalspine.com. And if you're looking for a little inspiration, I think there's 80 Google reviews on there. And you know, I've only been here a year. 
And it's because people get better for some pretty crazy stuff with what we do. And mm -hmm. it's worth an investigation. You know, don't close oh, yeah. the door on your, on your health until you've tried everything is my belief system. And, and then we put together the, you know, vitalism code to try to help people just simplify everything. And so we have essentially uh, what we call the eight things to do every day. And it's stretching and mindfulness and getting your nutrition dialed in and just getting everything so it's simplified. And it only takes eight minutes. So if people got eight minutes, they can check it out and they can go through the journey and uh, they can actually only do the first five if they want to. And that's only five minutes. Oh, that's great. And that's, is that on your vitalism code website? Yes, that's called okay. the vital eight is what we call that, but they can go there. They can sign up for vitalism code. It's currently complimentary because we're in the beta phase of me just utilizing it to train our clients in our office. But over the next few months, it will be something that becomes more of a national product line as we introduce a lot more things with it too. That's great. So can you just touch a little bit on just each of the four topics for wellness? I just want you to kind of go into it a little bit, just sure. so people have a clear idea. If you could, I know you have more in your website in that program, but just like a little introduction. Yeah. So we start with the foundation of your posture, right? When we look at posture, your head weighs about 10 pounds. If it's out of alignment, even one degree over a period of time, every single step that you take is going to be a little bit out of balance. So your body's going to compensate. It's simple. The head goes here, your shoulders are going to go this way, your hips going to go this way, your knees going to go that way. It has to, it has no other option because gravity does not care. Okay. Yep. So the first thing that we really do is we do a lot of spinal traction in a safe way of opening this up. Okay. And really getting it straight by using what's called a Z line traction, where essentially people put a, a stretching traction device that they do here and here and it pulls up this way. People with anxiety and depression, gets more blood flow into their brain. People with headaches and migraines, it gets the blood out of your brain. So it helps so much. People with thyroid problems, we work on the cervical curve. It opens up and gets their energy and their immune system going. Their heart and lungs, the nerves open to that. And they can stretch all the way down into their lower spine doing this. So it helps with sciatica and low back pain and everything else in the spine. It's a really safe thing people can do every day for strengthening and opening their spine. That's phase one, okay? And then okay. along with that, there's also um, foam rolling and lacrosse balls and things like that to really work out your body and get it moving the way it's supposed to. Second component mm -hmm. is always nutrition. You know, you are what you okay. eat. And we, we call them the four whites, which is, you know, uh, dairy, sugar, flour, and what's commonly referred to as like medications or pharmaceuticals. I like to look at it as anything that's not supposed to be in your body that you're putting in. Any extra chemistry or chemicals and things like that, preservatives, things that just aren't natural. Your body does not know how to process those things. Our bodies have been developed over many, many millennia or millions of years, depending on your belief system. But ultimately that's a long freaking time. And we have only a few decades of experience with these chemicals. Our body does not know what to do with it. So it stores them frequently as fat and adipose or as toxicity, mm -hmm. which can very much turn into cancer and a bunch of other really chronic long-term inflammatory types of diseases. Third component mm -hmm. is detoxification. The ability to get the junk out that you put in is vital. I mean, we are toxic, we are sludge buckets, man. And if people do not get rid of the crap out of their system, it builds up and it causes yeah. so many different types of diseases. Uh, and the fourth component is your mindfulness, is getting your mind right of what you wanna achieve, who you wanna be and how you wanna be you know, presenting yourself to the world. And we start off in our, our very first thing, we do a, a self-love exercise every day. You know, because mm -hmm. people do not express themselves in a very loving manner. People are very hard on themselves. So helping them realizing that, you know, they, they can feel into their heart and find it in their body that, hey, this body is a gift. Okay, this life is a gift in this moment. So to be really present with it, you know, get out of your head, get into your heart and just try to be a good person. First to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, be first, you know, it's just first to have a great relationship with your creator, whatever belief system that is, and then really be nice to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then that out to others. It's a good thing. Yeah. And a lot of times I, when I'm running in the morning, one of the things I do is like, okay, how do I lead with my heart? How do I feel mm -hmm. that joy? A lot of times we don't feel that joy until we've gotten a gift or won something or achieved something great. But if we take that moment and we remember how our heart felt at that moment, 
and then generate it when you don't have all those external things, it starts to shift the way that you are. And so I'll actually do that while I'm running and say, okay, can I feel the love I feel when something great has happened? And if I can take that and then apply it to my morning routine or when I'm in the middle of something, like it shifts the way that I behave. And it's very powerful. And the more you can start to capture how your heart feels during those great moments and start to implement it into your daily life, you start having a different experience on a daily basis. It's actually quite powerful. And just like we remember how to do other things, if we can remember how to do that, then you start to fill your life with more love as opposed to stress, fear, anxiety. Right. So. That's beautiful. That's, that's bad. It's, it's planting a seed each time mm -hmm. and then cultivating yeah. that seed. And Absolutely. that is what self-love is. You know, when I was in Sedona, I met a, met a guy and within like two or three minutes, I just was like, I'm like okay, what do you do differently than I do? Because he was mm -hmm. just radiated this loving presence and happiness. And he was, was like, I think 70 or so. And he goes, I tell myself, I love myself every hour on the hour. That's <laughs> like, awesome. Like, and he had actually a little chimer on his phone. This little bell would go off. And every hour he would say, if there was somebody around him, he would say it to himself. If he was by himself, he would say, I, I love you. I love you. I love you. Please forgive me. The world never showed me how to love you, but I know now and I love you. I love you. I love you. And that's awesome. the breath work and the, and the mantra that we actually use because it works. And when you do it, it's beautiful. It's simple. And it gives you, like you just said perfectly there, gives you like a little grounding point, a little seed that you're planting in the ground each time. And then you got to pull the weeds because life shows up. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious, there's so many different ways that people detox. Do you mm -hmm. have specific ones that you do or that you teach other people? Do you have like a set of five or six different ways? No, I think the very, the fastest, simplest way is, um, is soaking your feet in Epsom salt. Epsom salt baths oh, are okay. good, but when you very first start doing a detox, I like to pull everything through the feet. The reason is because reflexology, there's neurological endpoints to every single organ system that's been taught for millennia through the feet. So sometimes when you do a total body soak, it's exhausting and it's really hard. But if you're creating a circulatory system using as hot a water as you can handle, a cup of Epsom salt, and then we also use a cup of borax. There's a thing called okay. 20 mule team borax. Borax is boron. It's the number four, I'm sorry, number six on the periodic table, I think. And what that does, it's super alkalizing. It's got two positive electrons. So almost all the chemicals leaving your body are negative. Right? They're negative things that your body's holding on to. It's very acidic. So by doing a very uh, water, the pH is seven. Um, you know, you can also put some, uh, uh, oh goodness, uh, arm and hammer or whatever, um, baking soda in there too. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it takes to actually alkalize the system by pulling the, uh, the negative free radicals out in a lot of those chemistry. People, if they just start doing that, it's the fastest, safest, okay. easiest way of detox. Yes, we recommend even doing parasite detoxes and a bunch of other types, but start people off slow on detox and do that. Mm -hmm. And then always recommend like a greens uh, mix of some kind, okay. you know, because it contains high levels of what's called your polyphenols and your polyphenols are the part of the green vegetable that have the detoxability, right? And yeah. so by help, that helps to pull a lot of that stuff out. It cleanses the blood, cleanses the liver, cleanses the kidney, makes it easier for your heart to work that's all really easy, but important. Yeah. We just recently started growing wheatgrass to do wheatgrass juice shots. So oh. that has been really interesting. I'm curious your thoughts on wheatgrass. I think it's fabulous. I've, I've only maybe at one point in time extensively did it. And it's because I had a client who was coming in and she was, she was bartering out. She'd bring me trays of wheatgrass that I could do because growing it myself, I didn't have the patience for. I tried for about a week and it was a pretty uh -huh. Also, um, but if you're doing it, I think it's I think it's brilliant. I know uh, the Hippocrates Center down in Florida is huge on wheatgrass, even wheatgrass mm -hmm. enemas and stuff too. Oh so wow! Nothing you can do with them. It's a massive purge, increases glutathione, and really clean, cleanses your blood. So, man, go for it. Yes, I do have to say, like I like the growing part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that part is my expertise. Um, the actual drinking part that takes a lot of courage to oh, really? drink something that tastes like grass. 
Uh, if I could have somebody grow it for me, cut it, press it, do it, I just could do a shot. I mean, it's like one percent of the work. I'm down. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's one of the single healthiest things that you can do for cleaning the blood and and helping the liver for sure. Yeah, I've also been getting into sprouting lately. I don't know if you've done ever, ever done that, but broccoli sprouts they have a phytochemical in it called is it sulfonophone or something like that. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. But it's a they they think it's a huge anti-cancer compound to also help you with cleansing your body. And it's another way that I've been looking at detoxifying. And I do have to say, I kind of did this experiment over the past two weeks. So you grow them in a jar for seven days and then you eat them. And the three nights I ate them, I slept like a baby. And I normally sleep pretty good, but I mean, I was out. And the next thing I knew, I felt so energetic. And it was incredible. And I normally, I don't typically have trouble sleeping or anything like that, but it just enhanced it. And so then of course I started another jar. And so I went seven days without it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I kind of went back to my normal sleeping patterns. And then last night, again, I had broccoli sprouts yesterday because I have my new batch. And again, I slept so well. So I'm going to keep playing with it. And I Very cool. just, well, thanks for the inspiration because we, we ordered the stuff and we haven't oh, been yeah. doing it. So I, I have the jar, we got the, we got the seeds, everything they showed a couple of weeks ago and I kind of forgot about it till this moment. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. So but anyways, didn't mean to get us off track, but it's just uh, always totally trying to find ways to yeah. detoxify and and that's the fun thing about wellness too. And I, and I want to make that clear is once you get a really good foundation and that takes some education and some learning, but it doesn't have to be that hard. You just have to ask yourself the hard questions, you know, which is if I wasn't living like this and I was truly choosing to make a choice towards my health and wellness, what choices would I choose? Okay. It's a radically different way of creating a philosophy and creating a belief system than just kind of wandering through life, hoping things show up. But you know, like, you know, I, you know, your sleep patterns, you want to change it, you tweak it just a little bit and allows you to be experimental, which is fun. <laughs> it, it is. It's, it's really good. You know, try sprouting almonds. You know, it's a very simple, easy thing to do, but the vitamins go up like 1200% in a matter of like eight or 12 hours. And they'd give you this wonderful natural alkalizing buzz. But if you eat a, a cooked almond that's in, you know, soaked in salt, and then it does nothing for your body. Yeah. yeah so yeah. It's, it's choices within choices as you get into it more and more. That's fun though. Yeah. And then one other topic to kind of just to kind of dive into that's related is as we're trying to improve our health and wellness, one of the things that's been very important to me is how to decrease inflammation because when you run a hundred miles, you have to do everything possible to decrease your inflammation levels. And we know how closely linked inflammation and chronic disease are. So if you, can you touch base a little bit on kind of your studies on that? No, it's the absolute keystone. You know, it is the absolute keystone. You know, after doing this for 20 years, you know, I found that, you know, if you were to pick out one word, that was the word that defines whether you're truly well or not well. And, you know, in chiropractic, they'd like to say it's a subluxation or the, this, that. It really comes down to inflammation. I mean, yeah. just absolutely. And inflammation is, it's such a broad stroke. It's so confusing for people, right? Mm-hmm. But what it comes down to is you have to figure out the things in your life that are causing inflammation. And we do that through the four pillars. You know what, what is the thing that is causing you the mental stress? Maybe it's you never realized you weren't your thumb, right? Maybe it's you do need to find a really good uh, chiropractor. And if you don't have access to that, maybe it is doing traction on a daily basis to open up those joints to get that inflammation and that compression. Because the primary thing that we ever encounter that causes inflammation is gravity and misalignment. Misalignment and gravity is the force of your body being put on one or two specific joints versus throughout the whole system functioning like a big spring. And whether you're running ultra marathons right, and you're running a, a hundred or 50 miles, whatever that looks like, I wouldn't mm-hmm. do that. I don't think my body could hold up because I've been working on childhood injuries and still trying to get some things balanced out from that. You know, but for the people who do, they know that any little thing gets way magnified, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really and that's does. the same for all of us, but most people don't know it. Yeah. They're always getting magnified because if you're out of alignment, 10 pounds more on one side than the other. If you take one step, no big deal. If you take a thousand steps, that's 10,000 pounds in a day. And that equals two pickup trucks. 
on one part of your body. So yeah, That's and we're gonna be coming in with a lot more information. We have a ton of new videos. There's over 45 videos on Vitalism Co, but we have a new program coming out that is strictly on inflammation and how to reduce it across the four pillars. So in the very near future, that is going to be uh, a lot of the writing's been done and the information's there. We just gotta put it all together. So we look forward to bringing that to everybody. That, that sounds great. So if you had to give people one takeaway, what would it be for their health, wellness? You know what, I think that it's, it's worth the, the time and the energy and the exploration to become very, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, sovereign within your health. You know, mm -hmm. to, to truly step into the philosophy that we do heal from what we call above, down, and inside out. That the outside mechanisms of life are crutches, they can be needed, they can be vital at points in time, but they're rarely, if ever, the true solution. Symptoms are just a guiding communication system of an intelligent body, and in that as people become aware and figure out how to create that flow by making healthy choices, it's worth the time, it's worth the energy, and there's a massive level of self-love and personal satisfaction that comes from making healthy choices. Yeah, yeah. When you regain that control and you mm -hmm. feel the beneficial results of your choices it's yeah. so powerful and it just encourages you to do more of it it does it gets you your power back i mean if you want power make healthy choice for yourself don't let other people into your world don't let the chemistry into your body don't let those things live in a very vitalistic way which supports it through healthy choices not all the time but most of the time and it just what i like to use their bioaccumulates it just keeps adding up until your bank account becomes very full versus taking yeah. out withdrawals all the time and then you're bankrupt and in the hospital, but it's a choice. Yep. Ultimately. Absolutely. So good. So if people want to join your course, which I think they should, you know, it's free right now, people. So yeah. they can go to vitalismcode.com. Mm -hmm. But if they want to reach you personally, if they have a question or they want to come see you, what's yes, the best way? That's great. Yeah, they can go to vitalismcode uh, at gmail.com to, to email us, um, or they can go to the natural spine, so T H E natural spine uh, dot com, and they can find out more about our uh, center that we have and the, what we do that is very unique in the in the fields of health and wellness for bringing all those pillars together to help people really get healthy for the long run. That's great, and I really appreciate you joining us today. I know. You have a busy schedule and you help a lot of people. I've seen people that you've helped and I know that you have done great work. So thank you so much for coming on today, sharing with us. I know people are really gonna appreciate it. Well, thank you back. I, we still have, you know, over the last six months, I've turned so many people on the Facebook live video that we did uh, where we were, you were training people how to breathe and that really made a massive transition and a ton of help for a lot of people as they went through the, the initial phase of the COVID experience, learning to deal with their stress. So thank you yeah. back. You're welcome. Well, all of you guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your weekend and we will see you next weekend. Bye guys. Thanks everyone.